Welcome back to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. It's time to tackle Challenge 14. It's in the cards. We're hopefully going to get a respite from the very hard use playthrough that we had last time. The title of the challenge says it all, it's all about the cards. You start with the deck of cards, the starter pack so that you're able to carry two cards at once, and every pill is gonna be a card, and finally we have an item that we haven't seen yet, the battery. In the original Flash game, what the battery did was allowing you to charge your item as you're currently fighting your way through a room, but in this game it's different. Instead, it allows you to overcharge your item, and this will allow you to charge it up in order to have enough energy to be able to activate it up to two times. So what you'll want to do is, you'll want to have some good cards, save it up for a room where they're going to matter, and finally you're going to be able to use your souped up deck of cards in order to be able to get brand new cards in order to replace them, until that you get good things. So since we're reaching a boss, we're going to switch to the devil. Or maybe the other card will be good, but yeah, let's just see. Since this boss is made of two different entities, we might as well use the Shario because the bosses or enemies in this game will have an invulnerability frame whenever it comes to being rammed on whenever you're invincible like that. So since the boss is made of two different parts, we can damage both of them at once, all without waiting for one single health bar to go all the way down, so it's like you're chipping away at two bars. So this way it will allow you to do far more efficient damage. Yeah, we might as well use all of our cards just in order to speed this up. This is probably going to be a very quick challenge because sometime when the cards go up your way, this will make it so that this challenge can be very brief when you get the right combination of cards. But some other time it's going to be rather lengthy if you get cards that are going to be questionably useful. With that said, however, I'm getting pretty good luck out of the items that I'm getting from the Devil Room, as well than the one I'm getting out of the bosses. But yeah, this is pretty much gonna go ahead breakneck pace, or however you call it. This is a short video, and even then, there's not really a whole lot of editing into it, so... Yeah, we're just going to use our cards whenever we can. Oh. Are you gonna meet the strangers without prejudices? Well, who knows? I mean, I like strangers. Rusted Key will be a useful trinket to have for this challenge because it will allow us to possibly get more golden chests and therefore that means more items that can be of use to us. Yeah, Ting the Fool card might also have been useful here, but hey, beggars cannot be choosers. Oh, speaking of beggars, hello! Is it me or my commentaries just pretty much shaping up the entire video even though, well, I'm doing it pretty independently what's going on? Yeah, normally there's two pills in here, but hey, since I have absolutely no possibility to get pills at all because of the starter pack, hey, every single thing that I get just become cards. So the Devil Room or the Curse Room might be worth investigating because it means that I'll have a cheap alternative in order to get two brand new cards. Honestly, I probably could have just used my star cards in order in order to even be able to warp out of the Curse Room, but the thought didn't occur to me because there is no treasure room. The star cards is just going to teleport us to a random room, so whatever happens, it's completely up to luck. So whenever you pick up a battery like that and you have the battery item, it will make it so that it will recharge to the next full step of usability that there is out here. If you're missing dots or whatever in order to make the entire bar green, it's gonna go fully green and then afterwards it's gonna go fully yellow. So yeah, we might as well just embrace this entire challenge gimmick all the way. We're going to carry every card that we get, and honestly, I probably should reshuffle my cards, because I have the stars, which right now is not going to be too useful to me. I mean, if I get a problematic dead end or whatever, I probably will consider using it, but 
Other than that, I really don't know what I'm going to even do with it, and right now it's just preventing my deck of card to even shaping up. Oh, okay, I have the sun. This is a card, however, I'm keeping. Its map-making capabilities is not really the main draw because I bought the treasure map and with it you usually have a pretty good idea of where the boss is, but it's useful in order to clear an entire room which might be problematic, so we might as well keep on to it. So right now I probably should just get rid of the stars. I might have to do that on the next floor just in order to make it so that I will be able to carry a card that will be more useful. Oh, hello there, we have an opportunity to use our star card. And yet, yeah, it was entirely worth it because holy shit, that was one worthless room. Yeah, Magician is not really a card that we're going to keep for this challenge, so... Yeah, we're just going to use it whenever we feel like using homing shots. I mean, you're probably not going to have, like, tech or lasers or anything due to the usual absence of treasure rooms in the challenge, but right now, there is no real reason to just, uh, skimp on this card. We have no money, so therefore it's completely useless to even go into the shop. Yeah, that's a good room in order to use the cards. Honestly, I never liked the big bats. They are pretty annoying, and finally after Birds adds a new variety of bat that is even more annoying and has way more hit points than that so that the sun will not even be able to kill those guys. So, yep, I'm looking forward to that once again. Speaking of, I think the countdown until we finally switch to Afterbirth is... I think four more regular playthroughs and four challenges. I remember having played through the challenges and the last one that I completed was... I think challenge 18, so yeah, we're gonna go to challenge 19 whenever we'll go to Afterbirth. And oh, believe me, I'm really looking forward to it. Because it's probably the hardest challenge of all Rebirth, and I'm going to do it with a base game that is even harder to begin with, so... Hell yes! I'm looking forward to the train wreck! Anyway, we have Pink Carrion Queen. Once again, she's always a huge annoyance. I just hate that this boss has so much health, and finally that it's so inconvenient to even hit her. Even when you use your bombs, it barely seems to make a dent on her health bar, so you're almost better off waiting for her to spit up their, her heart minions like that that really don't do anything purposeful, and then you kill them because they almost do a better job at killing the boss than bombs will normally would. Alright, I think with these two hearts we're going to be close to killing the boss. Here we go, it's time for you to die by proxy. Hey, look at that, more damage. Holy shit, we're on a roll with this one challenge. Normally, this challenge can be kind of tedious because there will be times where you will do this challenge and you're not gonna have any damage boosters, so by the time you get, like, to the depths, then the challenge might be really tricky, but right now this challenge is pretty much the opposite of tricky. Yeah, tower is going to be useful whenever we'll reach the last portion of this wave, whenever we'll fight the knights. I never figured out why these enemies are even knights, but yeah, apparently they are Sir Brain Senior, or whatever their title is. Honestly, at this point of the playthrough, we don't really need that many cards anymore, but hey, the cards are just going to make us even stronger, so why should we refuse this occasion to uh, become even stronger for at least one room? Given the track record of this game for having well thought out but also really stupid ideas, I'm really surprised that there was not like a challenge which was all about pills or whatever. You just start with the pill box and the challenge is all about gubbing pills until you get all the right attributes or whatever and hey, let's have two good items. So, hello stars, it's time for... oh, okay. <laughs> 
Not the most useful card out here, but hey, that might allow us to have a stay at the shop just in the likelihood that greed doesn't show up because I really haven't visited any shops at all, so I'm not trusting my chances of there being a shop to begin with. Also, this room probably would have been good in order to activate the magician because it might help you to counteract uh, like the sucking ability of the force field ahead in the middle of the screen. Wow, this tumor was zero on f Wow, that is... That is pretty much like the worst tumors that I've ever seen in Isaac ever. Like about eight shots and all of them were complete whiffs. Or misses. Or the thing that happened. Yep, what do you know, it's greed. Surprise, surprise. But let's look at the bright news. In Afterbirth, there is an item that will allow you to make it so that Greed will stop spawning in shops and secret rooms. Bad news, you have to play really, really far and really, really, really well as one of the worst characters of the entire game in order to even be able to get this item. So, yep, you better get used to seeing Greed all of the time for quite a while. Oh, alright, we have the perfect card set up right here. We're going to use Devil against the boss, and then we're probably not going to give a damn, and we're just going to use the Emperor card in order to teleport against Mom. We're not really powerful, but we're strong enough to make it so that fighting Mom is not going to be really hard, so I might as well just charge up my entire battery in order to see what last card that I'll have, and then we'll be able to devise a plan with that. If I get yet another Devil card or a Shario card, I might use that against this boss in order to make it so that I will be able to keep my Devil Room. Uh, my Devil Room. My Devil card. Okay, so my deck of cards is going to be fully charged for the boss, so knowing me, I'm pretty much gonna go in the boss and then just trust whatever will happen out of my deck of cards for this final boss. Alright, we're just gonna duke it out against the gate without the devil card. Honestly, it's kind of a foolish decision because this boss can get really nasty if you don't really have good damage or any good stopping power in order to dodge all of the sh Yeah, all of the sh Yeah, all the stuff. And it doesn't help that right now the gate is not really helping me because it's not really using its attack that will clear all of the enemies out of the room instantly. Okay, more damage, but hey, at least we're set for the entire rest of this playthrough. We're just going to reach mom immediately. I don't even care about the last room. There's no reason to do any kind of exploring or whatever whenever you do a challenge in the first place. So, without any further ado... Yep, it's already the end of the challenge, and oh, it's also a stronger Rat of the Lamb Heromom. When the expansion for the original Flash Isaac came out, that was the new version of Mom that came out. Alongside, I think, with the red one, I'm not too sure if it was part of the game anymore or not. It's been forever since I played it, and honestly, I don't really miss it because Flash Isaac, for the most part, really aged horribly, and it pretty looks awful. And that uh, will pretty much do it for this challenge. All in all, it was a pretty... Oh, okay. I uh, kind of wanted to check out what was in the devil room just for fun, but hey, I accidentally ended the challenge. And we got a good item as a reward too, so that was a worthwhile challenge. So, coming up next, it's time to tackle Hazel again.